welcome back now when we have learnt the area bounded by a curve with hex axis it is time to find the area bounded by two curves yes in this lecture we are going to talk about the area bounded by two curves say y equal to fx and y equals to zx look at this figure in this figure we are having a function fx lying in the upper side somewhat and another function y is equal to gx lying in the lower side we have shaded the area bounded between these two curves between the point a and b by the pink color you can clearly observe it we want the area bounded between these two curves that means we want to find out the the pink area shaded here very simple to observe that the, the elementary strip can be created uh, vertically as shown here by the yellow strip if we create it the area bounded by these two curves can be uh, easily uh, observed uh, in, in the following way that is we can we can uh, first get the area bounded by y equal to fx with x axis which was our previous case and we know how to get it the area is uh, integral a to b fx dx as function is lying above x axis it is so simple and then we can also talk about the area bounded by the second curve y is equal to gx that is basically the integral a to b gx dx when we want the area bounded between the two curves it is very simple as uh, we can just subtract the two areas that is the upper big portion of the area when subtracted from the lower portion of the area we can get easily this pink shaded area so to get the area bounded by two functions fx and gx we can simply uh, between the two points x equal to a and x equals to b we can simply do the following that is just do the integral a to b subtraction uh, integral of subtraction of the two functions fx and gx so we just subtracted fx minus gx and then integrated it between the point x equal to a and x equals to b remember this is only possible when fx goes above gx fx is greater than or equal to gx what will happen when gx is greater than fx simple we'll be just subtracting gx minus fx so whatever function is greater will be subtracting the smaller function from, from it so that we, we get a positive required shaded area. Let's see this with an example. The question is find the area of the region bounded by the curve y is equal to x square and y is equal to x cube. We have drawn the two functions here you can see y is equal to x square is slowing as is, is moving faster uh, between this interval of 0 to 1 as compared to y is equal to x cube that means y is equal to x square is lying above y is equal to x cube especially when x lies between 0 to 1 the two functions are intersecting at x equal to 0 and then again intersecting at x equal to 1. So we are getting two important intersection points x equal to 0 and x equals to 1. That was our A and B. You know it. So uh, this point of intersection can be easily obtained by solving the two equations x square and x cube and this will give you clearly the two values x equals to 0 and 1. That means the intersection point is clearly 0 and 1. So we have to just subtract x cube from x square because x cube is less than x square and then we are quickly going to get our required area. Simply the required area is integral 0 to 1 x cube subtracted from x square. That is the required integral required area is integral 0 to 1 x square minus x cube dx. Quickly solving it the integral of x square is x cube by 3 while integral of x 
cube is x power 4 by 4 and lower and upper limits are 0 and 1 solving it we get the answer 1 by 12 that means the area bounded by x square y is equal to x square and y is equal to x cube is simply 1 over 12 let's talk about one more example here this is little tricky example the example says that find the area of the region bounded by the curve y is equal to x square and x into y is equal to 1 and the line y is equal to 4x in the interval 0 to 1 closed let's first create the diagram of different curves given in this problem looking at the first curve y is equal to x square which is a parabola opening upward we have created it this way you can clearly see x into y x multiplied by y is equals to 1 is a very popular curve called rectangular hyperbola if you are not aware of it you can just go back into the coordinate geometry course of my that course is very detailed coverage of all possible curves x into y is a rectangular hyperbola x into y is equal to 1 is a rectangular hyperbola and line y is equal to 4x is here drawn like this x is equals to 1 and x is equal to 0 are the two interval bounding the given area let us quickly solve it the point of intersection is x is equals to 1 by 2 and x is equals to 2 and you can quickly observe it so we are having two possibilities of uh, bounding areas between x is equal to 0 and x is equals to 1 by 2 we can clearly see that the straight line is lying above the parabola while between 1 by 2 and 2 the curve x into y is equals to 1 was lying above the parabola so dividing this whole problem into two dif different intervals 0 to 1 by 2 and then 1 by 2 to 1 because we are not going to go beyond 1 as the question says the algebraic uh, interval is 0 to 1 so our integral is 0 to 1 straight line y is equal to 4x minus y is equal to x square so 4x subtracting uh, minus x square is the first portion of the area and the second portion of the area is y is equal to 1 by x minus y is equal to x square in the interval 1 by 2 to 1 integral of 1 by x is ln x right using the proper integral formula and then evaluating this whole integral we got the function as 2x square minus x cube by 3 between 0 to 1 by 2 and this value let's quickly simplify it further and yes our final answer is ln 2 plus 1 by 6 isn't that very interesting answer here is another important result that you must know and that is the function fx minus gx doesn't change sign in the interval fx x is equals to a and x is equal to b so the area of the region bounded by the two func two curves can be simply calculated by using integral a to b fx dx fx minus gx dx however if y is equal to fx and y is equal to gx intersect in the interval as shown in the figure we need to consider the shaded region on each side of the point of intersection independently another shortcut that you can quickly use is irrespective of the fact whether fx is above gx or below gx you don't bother about it you just do integral a to b fx minus gx if this value is a positive one that's your answer if this value is a negative one just take the modulus of it that means just take the positive absolute value of this answer so so my take home for you is irrespective of positive or negative nature of fx and gx which one is above which one is below irrespective of all that you just do one thing integrate from a to b fx 
minus gx dx and this is your answer if it is positive take it as it is if it is negative take the absolute value of it this can be a very quick way to solve very of the special problems see you in the next lecture